Okay, so another film blog review type thing, and uh, today I'm going to look at Ted, the new film from Seth MacFarlane. Seth MacFarlane, even the man behind Family Guy and all that, which I went to see at uh, the cinema, Mallard Double Bill, our cinema over here, um, on Sunday night. Um, and I've got to admit, from the start, I wasn't really sure what to expect from Ted, but um, I sort of think now, after having seen it, I was maybe expecting a little bit too much. But uh, I've been a fan of Family Guy uh, since I first saw it, which is probably when it was first shown on UK TV. I'm not sure how long ago that was. Quite a while now, I think. And um, I've got a, a sort of passing fondness for American Dad as well. I don't think it's quite up there with Family Guy, but it's a, it's a good show. Um, so, you know, if uh, nothing else, I was looking forward to this first live action feature performance writing and directing job from Seth MacFarlane, if it can be called a live action performance from him, but uh, I guess he performed in it. Um, and the film sort of started out as pretty much I expected. We'd sort of the flashback of uh, the story that uh, set it, setting up the plot, really, with uh, Patrick Stewart doing a great bit of voiceover narration work. He's a bit of a MacFarlane regular these days, it seems. And, um, and his bits, beginning and end, sort of bookended it very funny and that's the same typical sort of style that he's done a few voiceovers in Family Guy with really and sort of set up the whole story of uh, a boy and his bear so to speak and um, from there move on to the present day don't worry I'm not going to tell you the whole story but it, it kind of doesn't really matter a huge amount and uh, find Mark Wahlberg's John sharing the sofa with um, the McFarlane voiced mo-capped whatever it's called mo-capped that's what it's called Teddy the bear Ted of the title and um, from there we sort of go with them on a series of uh, I, I say little adventures but I'm not talking adventures in the big adventure movie sense but in a sort of romantic comedy type down to well not down to earth but uh, little adventures that would fit in a teen teen romantic comedy type thing or a romantic comedy type thing I guess um, little adventures but uh, they sort of spanned from the sublime to the ridiculous in the end really but uh, in quite funny ways when I say sublime is ridiculous. Again, what you'd expect from the man behind Family Guy. Um, the plot, as as it was, what there is of it, is one that I have to say seems very familiar. It's uh, a guy in his mid-thirties sort of suffering from, I guess, what you could call arrested development, overcoming it to try and win the girl who he's been going out with and split up with all of this kind of thing um, while all at the same time not alienating his best friend or best friends in the case of some films but in this one friend and um, that being Ted and but that plot really in the purposes of this film just seems to be there to lead from from one sketch to another involving John and Ted and their various sort of shenanigans and and these little adventures I mentioned earlier be it sort of getting to work, getting a job for Ted, that kind of thing. And, um, yeah, uh, that's kind of how it goes. But um, it's with this plot that where my sort of first problem about the uh, about the film really begins, because um, it's the story of two relationships running parallel, the relationship between John and his girlfriend, played by Mila Kunis, and John and his teddy bear, who we've heard about. And, I mean... Mark Wahlberg and Mila Kunis both put in good performances. You know, they're not, they're not bad. They they do what they do. But I found it really hard to get emotionally attached to any of the characters. I didn't really expect to gain much emotional attachment to the CGI bear, although he looks very good. He's a very well done CGI bear. But I sort of felt like maybe I should have got a little bit more attached to. The other to the two human characters but I didn't really and it sort of left the whole thing feeling a little bit hollow for me in the end um, and you know I wasn't really expecting a totally fully engrossing emo emotional roller coaster type um, tale in the film like you get in some things because it, it's not that kind of movie um, but I did expect a little bit more than we got here as quite a few of the comic moments as it went through and sort of most of the ending sequence really relied on having some sort of emotional attachment with the characters and um, I just couldn't find it and so it sort of left the end of the film feeling a little bit uh, well just a little bit oh well that's that then moving on kind of thing and I don't know maybe it's it's to do with 
the potential similarities that I see between myself and John in some situations, but maybe that's me too, looking a little bit too deep and personal for a, a review of a comedy film. So you never know. I mean, that said, it was funny. It did sort of pass any test you could come up with of being a comedy film. I laughed a lot of times and quite a few different bits of it, although there was a couple of bits which worried me a bit. But sort of worried me a bit in the way that Family Guy comedies worries me a little bit and that it sort of goes a little bit too far but that's what you expect and really that's that's part of the appeal of it I guess to some people but um, I guess that similarity to Family Guy as well was a bit frustrating because there were some scenes which seemed almost directly lifted out of that show and um, yeah that was a sort of a bit of a shame but I suppose expected a little bit as well um, but the best moments in the film kind of centred around references back to Flash Gordon um, that's probably because I'm a big fan of the uh, early 80, 82, 83 Flash Gordon film um, and it's sort of they were the funniest bits for me, there was a whole sequence of those all together which I thought was brilliant um, I mean the only thing they lacked really was having a cameo from Brian Blessed in there but I'm not sure that he would have fit quite so well I don't know, do Americans get the Brian Blessed bits as well as the British. He seems a particularly British kind of eccentric comedy moment. But anyway, yeah, it was a funny film, definitely, Ted. Uh, good. And while it sort of may not have really added anything new to uh, to the sort of the this sort of comedy genre that it falls into, which we, I, we've seen quite a lot of over the years, I think it's uh, yeah, it's possibly a genre overserved in cinema maybe, I don't know, but um, it did do what it did very well, it was a good piece of that sort of thing, I mean I've heard comparisons to Paul and things like that, and I kind of see where they're coming from, but I think I preferred Paul overall, but um, but yeah, it's uh, it sort of did, Ted did all of its bits in its own little way, it had a little twist to most of the stuff, and while I don't think it would be anything new to people who like Family Guy, who's seen quite a lot of Family Guy, it was an entertaining couple of hours. And um, I don't know, maybe I just went in expecting a bit too much from it.